Okay, let's meditate for a few minutes. Close your eyes and watch your breath. Stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Try to make your mind unmoving. In other words, sounds come through, thoughts come through, but they go right past. The image of a well-trained mind in the canon is of a stone column, sixteen spans tall, eight spans buried in the rock, so that no matter which direction the wind comes from, the, the column doesn't move. It doesn't even shiver or shake. The winds stand for the ways of the world. There's gain and loss, status, loss of status, praise, criticism, pleasure, pain. And you want to make your mind resistant to these things. Although, in other, word, you might, in other way, you might say, put up no resistance at all, just let them go past. You don't want to be influenced by them. You want your mind to be firmly based, firmly grounded, with a strong sense of what's right and what's wrong, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and it'll let the events of the world push you around. So, here's your chance to practice that kind of state of mind. There's the sound of the birds, whatever thoughts you may have left over from before you're meditating. Just let them go past, past, past. You hang on to the breath, because they don't destroy the breath. The breath is there. It's just a question of what you allow your attention to be distracted by. Then you want to stand firm. You want your mind to stand firm. So it's not pushed around. Because if your mind is easily pushed around, you don't know where it's going to go and where the push is coming from. In other words, when you act and you speak and you think, you want to do it deliberately and have a clear sense of what you want to accomplish, what your motivation is. And then you check. You want to make sure that you don't harm anybody. Either you don't want to harm yourself, you don't want to harm others. And to see this clearly, the mind has to be firm. To borrow another image from the canon, the, the Buddha said when you start out meditating, you try to make your mind like earth. People throw disgusting things in the earth, but the earth doesn't shrink away. In the same token, people can pour perfume on the earth, and the earth doesn't carried away by that. You want a mind that can observe things clearly for what they are, and not give in to its immediate reactions. So working on, work on developing this quality of solidity in your focus. That way your life develops some solidity as well. It becomes a life that you can depend on. Your actions, your wor <coughs> thoughts, words, and deeds become things that you can depend on. Because after all, we live in this world. If we can't depend on ourselves, who are we going to depend on? And as John Sweat used to say, there's only one person we're responsible for, and that's ourselves. So look after yourself. Don't abandon this responsibility. When you take care of this responsibility, then your good influence begins to spread around. We're not saying that you shouldn't care about other people, but caring about other people has to come from your own solidity. You stand firm in virtue, you stand firm in your concentration and discernment. That's going to have a good influence not on others. If your mind is not firm, then the influence it's going to have on others is, uh, is uncertain. So try to be certain in the solidity of your mind, and in the harmlessness of your intentions. And that's your protection. You protect yourself and you offer protection to others. As the Buddha said, when you hold by the precepts, in all cases, then you're giving universal safety, and then you're going to have a portion of that universal safety yourself.